<laughs> All right, and we are live. Well, welcome back to the Creative Jam session. I'm John. I'm Tim. And I'm Dwight. And we are professional artists talking about our personal pa passion projects uh, while we have day jobs. Yes, and, sir. Uh, this is our first, our, our fourth one that we've done so far, which is pretty awesome. We're on a roll. It's yeah. April. Yeah. Um, and this is and our first. This is our first legitimate live stream. So, uh, you know, we're on stage. The spotlight's on. But thank you for joining us. It's a good opportunity. We're, we're ready to we're ready to make it happen. And it will be more entertaining than Game of Thrones. I promise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's the worst night ever to do this. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but we're committed to this. We're committed yeah. to this. We're committed to our stuff. We, whoever doesn't have TiVo or HBO Go, you know what I'm saying? No worries, we got this. So, <laughs> um, so, um, for those who have been watching us, um, we've posted a couple new videos, um. Just trying a couple different formats, a little bit of editing, a little bit of comedy, but we tried to cut it down. Our first video was about 50 minutes, and these were less than 15. So um, if you guys have any comments or feedback, just let us know. This is this is an evolving format, but we're enjoying it. Yeah, totally. It seemed like that was like our one of our big goals for 2019 was to just you know we've been doing these conversations for a while but we wanted to share it with people and like we've been coming up with some interesting things that help us with our passion projects and we want to share that with the world so it's uh the first three videos we did yeah it's been kind of a, it's still a little bit of an exploration and trying to figure out um how we're going to roll with these videos but um yeah yeah there yeah. we go so we, we were talking about, you know, more ways to interact, you know, with people. Um, this this kind of like a live chat. And um, we were, we were kind of um, looking in the super chat, but I, I did find out that uh, we kind of need to have at least a thousand subscribers before we do the super chat. So we're not quite there yet. I think we're officially at eight subscribers. So well on our way. Yes, yes. <laughs> It is much further than our zero subscribers we had a few weeks ago. So we're absolutely thankful for every subscriber person that shows up. Um, we'll just we'll just we'll just take our steps as they come. No worries. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Cool. So. So yeah, it's we do want to include you guys in on our uh, on our jam sessions. We're inviting you guys to jam along with us. So yeah, we we definitely appreciate. Uh, comments or insight or you know anything you can contribute um you know in the comments section and um yeah yeah might as well uh jump into the new stuff right so <laughs> that's right so each time uh we do this we're basically recapping what we did the last month and we're taking a look at where we're gonna go from there so so tim why don't you kick us off and let us know how uh how the month of March has been for you and your passion project. All right. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> the month was busy. Um, no doubt. I, I start. I kept going with the uh, weekly Instagram posts with the one sketch a week, uh, which I'm enjoying. I, I, I miss the uh, uploading like a full finish illustration, but at the moment I, I can only do sketches. Uh, my time goes elsewhere. Uh, as far as Hidden Falls, I wanted, which is my personal project, um, it's going to, right now, it's going to, I'm aiming for a comic, um, just like a, one overall story arc. Um, but right now, I wanted to have a script done by April 1st, but unfortunately, that did not happen, uh, mostly because I'm still trying to figure out my main character and kind of what drives him and really why the audience would like to follow him on this journey yeah so um the the other character i guess like side not really psychic but you know i mean the next one that's just as important i, I got her down she's you know i understand where she's going but as far as the main character i just you know i'm just trying to figure out what I want to say, not say I'm trying to say something deep, but more just like, what is the story? 
you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, uh... I'm a little bummed out. I'm not gonna lie that I missed it. Um, you know, I don't want to make excuses. I just missed it. But um, I want to keep going. I want you guys to really push me and hold me accountable for this yeah. next meetup. And um, but really, it's just because I want to start on it. I don't want to rush starting on it though. I want to. You know, once I start drawing and creating the comics, I don't want to go back. I want to keep moving forward and finish it so I can go on to other projects, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but with that said, I uh, Stanley Sticks His Neck Out, the children's book I was working on for a family member. Yeah. I finished that. Um, it. She sent it to get a copy written, and now she's looking into printing, uh, self-publishing right now. Oh, okay. She got um, thinking about doing like a Kickstarter or anything like that. I don't think so. I, I can. Uh, I should probably talk to her about that. I'm not sure her route, the route mm -hmm. she wants to go. Um, I don't know if she has connections. I don't know. I guess it yeah. also depends on like how, like how widespread she wants to do that book too. Because like, yeah, a lot of these guys that are self-publishing, they run a Kickstarter campaign and then they get like pallets and pallets of books <laughs> from printed in China shipped over. And it's like, you know, that's like a huge investment if you're, I think, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what self-publishing is the, the biggest expense. It seems to mm -hmm. be like the cost of all the printing and stuff. Yeah, that mailing it out, you know, just making sure the books yeah. aren't damaged on the way mailing, if they get lost in the mail. Oh man, yeah. Um, I do have some images. I want to share with you guys. Give me a awesome. moment. Yeah, I figure the first thing you know about self-publishing that's different from um, being like uh, published by like a, basically a publisher is distribution, right? Is you have a connection to a like a really broad audience, and you don't have to, you know, go to California and ship it, you know, yourself. You, mm -hmm. you gotta. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, right. right. Well, I want you to finish your thought, though, because you know, no. you're in the middle of it. No, I guess that's all I wanted to say is that, uh, you know, doing it yourself, you got to figure out your shipping and your distribution, which is annoying. Right. That is definitely a big deal. So I'm clicking on it right now so so the viewers can get a primary look at your work. And then when we're done, just let me know, OK? Sure. Um, sounds good. Uh, so here it is. That's, that's I'm just showing a couple sample pages, but really, if you if you check out my Instagram or my web page, um, the art style is very different than what I I usually do. But I was looking for something that's fun for children, and, <laughs> and also is um um something I can do quicker than spending months on one you know one illustration one page for this. Yeah. So uh, I kind of simplified it down and uh, kept it more. I tried doing just something eas easier, but still not like I'm um, jipping it. You know, I mean, like I'm not sacrificing uh, design or, or fun just to get it done. You know what I mean? Like I'm something I'm still proud of. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But um, yeah, I think it turned out good. And uh, Lauren liked it, so we'll see what happens. You know, really, the, the main point of it is um, uh, I'm trying to stop sharing my screen. Did I stop? Yeah. Yeah. The main point is it's like, you know, you finish something and it might open a door for something else. So, mm -hmm. and it's just something now I can be like, you know what? I, I was interested in children's books and I finished one. So now it's like, yeah, I'm still interested. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's cool. But now that that's done, it's like focus completely on uh, Hidden Falls, which is a working title. The more I say it, the more I don't really care for that <laughs> title. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So for next time, uh, script, have a script ready for you guys, or at least a character fi finish, but wow, cool. ideally the script. You've uh, you've updated quite a bit since the um, first draft that I had. I, I had pulled that up, but I didn't want to show something that uh that's a previous <laughs> you know, without your permission so um at some point you know i'm sure people would like to kind of get a look at that yeah maybe i'll do something um 
show like a before and after make make maybe make a post on tumblr or instagram yeah you know i'm all about showing the process which is why i like social media to begin with is you people can see you know how you went from start to be or from beginning to end yeah you know yeah also for your viewers we um any of you faithful you know cjs <laughs> favorites, you know, fans, uh, we've been discussing um, uh, released in our Tumblr page on here as well so that we can, uh, so you guys can look over, you know, some of our, our discussions and, and some of our work in progress. Um, I don't think we're ready today to release it, but um, I think that's something that's in the works that maybe in the near future we'll have as one of our links um, in the description for you guys to take a look at. Yeah, because it seems like there's a lot of resource material that we shared with each other about story mm -hmm. structure and, you know, what, whatever, like tips and tricks or artists we like. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I, I don't think we really contributed much to it recently, but that might be something we want to do to keep almost like a place where we can uh, just put stuff that we want to show off. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff about writing and uh, a lot of the um, virtual hangouts that um, Jason Brubaker was doing with some of his uh, buddies, other artists. Yeah. Really all insightful stuff. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, Dwight, what have you been up to, buddy? Yeah, um, <clears throat> well... First and foremost, I've really just been working a lot on the on our videos and stuff. Um, but I, I got to admit that I, I'm just really proud that uh, I got a chance to start working on a high speed Waffle Man mini comic recently. Um, and so uh, I started watching a lot of old uh, Captain Crunch commercials from like the 70s and stuff. <laughs> and it really just I don't know why I just decided to, but it just really inspired me. It's kind of like a like a formula for the way that they break down the uh, commercials, and, and in some ways that is the way that I wanted to do my mini comic. So immediately you'll have like this really immediate like establishing thing. You think about it, like in, in less than like from 15 to 45 seconds, they set up a villain, they set up like the character, then they set up the serial. And, they, and then and then they solve the problem and then the commercial ends really tight format really quick right so um that's kind of how i wanted to do my um my, my uh my mini comic it'll almost kind of be like a serial mascot you know high speed waffle man to start out like that and then that'll kind of lead into like my my full comic so i kind of wanted to establish that high speed waffle man is is someone that kind of comes in and restores, you know, um, kind of like a um, like a like a breakfast that is unbalanced, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's right. The breakfast adventure. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and so he does that, and you know, and at the end, the kids are like, "Yay!" or or whoever was cooking before, and their their breakfast is sad and droopy, or you know, for Captain Crunch, it's like soggy, right? You know. And then uh, he restores that thing, and people have a balanced and delicious breakfast, and everybody's happy, right? So yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I I'm writing it. I just kind of like started drawing it, and it's um it's shabby right now. Um, but but it's but it's further than I've ever been with this concept. So I'm really happy that that's uh, in progress. I even kind of like started. Um, hold on a second. Maybe I can grab my little. Like I um, <laughs> I started like I like tore some pieces of the paper and I just started laying it out and I just like let's just draw it you know and then I just just started breaking it down and if it's good or bad who cares right like let's 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 commit you know to mm -hmm. it so it's starting to come along I I like it it's not it's not it's not you know finished but it's it's coming along so that's my first thing yeah just keep the ball rolling you know <laughs> that's uh. I think like any little bit helps, you know, yeah. when you're feeling like you may not have monumental things, may not have like finished art, but it's kind of like 
it's going beyond like thought process. It's like you're actually getting something tangible down in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. So that's that's good. Um, the next part is is that um, I've been trying to unify all my logos, uh, and my website names on all my social media. So if you um, if you get a chance to look at my Instagram, the title isn't what it was. It used to be like ditto or like d.itto, but now it's dw2 art, you know, or dw2 art productions, you know, and I changed that on, um, you know, like uh, really a lot of my other things, you know, and my website mm -hmm. is kind of the main driving force of, of all of my social media and stuff. So I started looking into my Patreon and I, um, you know, and, and Gum Road. And I'm, I'm kind of ready to put up my art book on that. I, f I sold four art books this weekend, yeah. which is really cool. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm um, and I've got more people asking me about some stuff. I went to like a, a art show, like an art show this weekend um, down to, uh, downtown Detroit. Um, one of the, one of my friends from work, one of the employees, She's a graduate from um, a particular school. I can't I can't remember the name of it at the moment, but um, let me see real quick. But she invited me in, and I was like, "Wow, this is really cool." It's um, it was a plus. It's plus plus. It's at the Detroit Center for Design and Technology. So these guys were um, this is like their senior. This is like their thesis for their BFA. So they were kind of having an interactive um, exhibition of their work, and. Um, so I got a chance to meet some of the uh, artists down there and I connected with them. And it's just, um, you know, I'm just seeing that I can, I, I can develop my community and start to show them my work. And so I connected with them, they connected with, you know, and we switched our mm -hmm. Instagram. Just immediately, you know, the things that I've uh, kind of done has started to pay off just that quickly. So, um, you know, it was cool. And I, I didn't sell anything to them, but, you know, I had some some people come over this weekend, one of my sister's friends, and they were like, oh, you did an art book? And I was like, yeah. And next thing you know, people were just like buying it. And I was like, okay. So I just started writing up stuff on the, on the back and I gave them books and four, just like that. So um, I want to have it set up so I can do more sales and stuff online, like you tell. Um, so that's cool. So, so that's my second thing. Um, yeah, yeah, created, you know, and last but not least is the, the videos, which is, it's more time consuming than most people might think, you know, um, just kind of, uh, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I really liked that. I, I'm almost done with the last part of kind of our episode two. And I probably am not going to do a whole lot of editing for episode three. I just kind of, I just kind of want to move forward so we can, um, uh, Mm -hmm. Just focus on our mm -hmm. art, you know, you know. Yeah, trying to find that balance of like you don't want to over edit it, but you don't want it to be just totally raw. So yeah, yeah like what's the most efficient way to like make it more watchable and mm -hmm. and still because uh, we've got kind of an odd format with this too, I think, because it's not like we're doing a how to video. It's like super clean and edited, and it's not just like a, a random. I mean, it is sort of like a random like talking show but you know we're still kind of figuring that out i guess yeah well um we've had some discussions about what the future of cjs is and maybe we can save um that for after you get a chance to talk john but um you know there's there's some there's some ideas that we're kind of having um about mm -hmm. what we want to do i get i guess i can just do it now um basically our initial format was kind of like that that three video thing that we did you know episode one two and three kind of star wars themed right but after that um we're gonna start immediately focusing on passion projects and then um uh maybe eventually doing you know uh spotlights on each of our particular projects so we can say hey this is what you know what we're doing we put out like a legitimate video on what is uh, you know, kingdom come, what, it, what, you know, what is high speed waffle man, you know, and then, you know, we can kind of do like legitimate spotlights on that, you know, maybe these videos can, um, and then we can kind of, you know, introduce properly our, our stuff to people. 
And then after we finish that, maybe we can start, you know, interviewing other artists and stuff and talking to them about, you know, their passion project and what it takes to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this, this a, you know, and, and like I said, there's a opportunities to to get feedback from people, see what's working and what's not and what people uh, connect to and just kind of listen to, you know, give the people what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we, we talked about too, this like uh, brought up like how we're managing our projects, like sure. different software we're using and stuff like that. And as far as like bringing people on, that, that'd that be great to bring uh, Mike Wynn on just because uh, a, we brought him up before, but his project's great, and um, you know, it's something he keeps pushing and and making it better and better, and it's just like it's great, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it would be cool. So, so yeah, that that's that's what I've been up to, and uh, so now, <laughs> cool. off you, John, what what's been up yeah. with you and your project? Well, uh, I did kind of want to just touch on a little bit of what you were talking about um going to that uh um that gallery show and connecting with other artists because i feel like that's something i really missed about being in art school that like now that you know we're been working professionally don't really there's just opportunities that come along when you're in college and i used to love gallery shows where you can talk to the artists you know um especially like an opening night of a gallery show where they got the snacks and stuff and yeah. like <laughs> got a little wine, everyone's dressed up nice. It's like a cool atmosphere that uh, I just haven't been a part of in a while, but, um, yeah. but kind of interesting. Like uh, it's funny you mentioned that because um, uh, like last week or so I went to, uh, there's a new coffee shop that opened in downtown Brighton where I'm at and uh it's right on the mill pond and it's like oh this that's cool let's go check it out so me and my wife stepped in there and um there was a bunch of art all over the walls and uh so i asked the the barista like what's up with this art and he basically said that um they like to showcase local artists work in the in the coffee shop it's like a coffee shop and a and a theater they've got a stage there so maybe they do live music i don't know um but yeah, he was like, yeah, do you know any local artists? And I was like, well, actually, yes, I do. And um, <laughs> so I showed him uh, I showed him my Instagram stuff, mostly my Inktober stuff. And I told him I'm working on a comic book and I'm really trying to show off some of my, uh, my illustration work. And so he was like really impressed with what I showed him. And he was like, yeah, let's, let's set something up. So um, I think uh, I don't have like a, a set time yet, but he basically said that they've got a couple of artists lined up. So maybe mid mid to late summer this year would uh, they would have some kind of a gallery showing of my work. So that's pretty exciting. You know, it's um, I, the only time I've showed work, it's when I've been part of another like gallery. It's like a multi artist show. Um, so this would just be like my own work and I can showcase my characters and uh, I really want to push for my book, so it's probably going to be mostly art related to Yeshua and stuff. So, um, but it kind of goes hand in hand with last time I was talking about uh, picking up some freelance work and using the money from freelance to uh, pay for some of the equipment that I need to go into production on my book, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, so, um, more and more, I've been kind of thinking about. Uh, what are some ways that can I get exposure, but also can I make some money off of the art that I do have? I think uh, this gallery show will be a chance for me to like not only show it off and, and get exposure, but show, like sell some actual like framed art, mm -hmm. maybe some original pieces, depending on you know how much time I have to, to do that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's inspiring to hear you guys are selling stuff on Gumroad too. Uh, which is really great. It makes me want to set that up prior to like uh, an event like this. Yeah. And um, the other goal I had from last time was to set up a Patreon page. And I actually did that. It's funny, like right after we were talking about it, um, Jason Brubaker threw a video up and he was, he was saying how um, Patreon is planning on raising their rates that the, their percentage that they take. And, um, but they're going to, grandfather everyone in at the low rate so i was like well shoot 
I think it goes in effect in May sometime. So I was like, well, I don't really have time to set up the Patreon and all the details and all that yet, but I'm going to definitely like, you know, in small steps, you know, like just set up the page, um, get it locked in and, and then I'm going to go back and like refine it and, and figure out what, what kind of incentives for different levels of patronage. And, um, so that was uh, one goal that I, that I accomplished last time. And, um, but I think the biggest thing was, uh, my script. It's something I've been laboring over for years now. And, um, you know, I shared with you guys before I did one version of a script where it was like, basically like a, a screenplay. Cause I always pictured this being, um, uh, a feature length film, but, um, I don't have the resources to make a feature film, obviously, especially like an animated, like a CG feature. Um, but doing a comic book, I can tell the story, I can design the characters and do all this stuff and make it sort of a package that would fit into uh, a film. But I quickly realized that uh, comic book scripts, um, for, the, for the size comic book that I want to make, about 150 pages, it's like a trade um, paperback comic size. I was like, there's no way I can tell this story. It's, it's too big. It's, um, comic books don't have that much time to go get into the origins of characters and, and it's just a different medium. So I, I took the script that I had and that I like shared with you guys before and you guys gave me feedback on it. And I really took a hard look at like, what can I cut out of this and make it condensed? Because it's like, I got to hit the ground running. I don't have time to slowly set everything up. So I was like, all right, let me write a script where we just jump right into the action and um, we'll, just kind of do flashbacks to get pieces of the origin so that I I can get the essence of what I already have been working on condensed down into this this new 150-page uh, book. And so um, it was my goal to finish that script at the end of February, and that time came and went, and I was just like, uh, um, but I pretty much just finished it up at the end of March and just kind of refined it a little bit at the beginning of April here. And, uh, it's feeling pretty good to me. And, you know, I sent you guys a script to check it out. And, uh, I think that's kind of the stage that I'm at now is, uh, I want some, some people that I trust that know about storytelling and this kind of stuff to, um, just take a look at it and bounce ideas off me and point out any plot holes and any problem areas. And, uh, and I, Pretty much at this stage, I kept the script in um, more or less bullet points um, with some uh, some rough dialogue, just like placement dialogue, because I have like an idea of like, yeah, this is probably what they're going to say, something like this. But I feel like that's going to be a whole other stage of like finessing exactly how they speak. And I may even do that after I uh, start going into production on the images, because it's taken me so long this point to, to get to this point that I want to just push forward. And even if it's not perfect, just like get, get a book done. Um, so yeah. So while, while you guys are reading it and, and thinking about it and giving me feedback, I uh, started thinking about the next step and I've been dying to do some art and particularly I want to see like what some cover art could look like. And I went back and redesigned my, my Yeshua logo. Right. Um, I wanted to show, uh, this is from my pre-production concept art book that I showed before. Yeah. Um, I like the kind of adventure feel of, of this sort of a cover where it's, um, it's like a snapshot of a scene as opposed to like main characters that are like posing in like, a you know, action trio. Um, so I've got three main characters I want to show off. And I did a couple of little sketches. And I was like, I don't think I want to pose them like, like a typical comic book. I want to do a snapshot of a scene, but also um, the lettering on Yeshua. Um, I wanted to do a little, a little more customization to that because I think this is just basically like a font that I found and and threw it together. And I like some of the things that are happening with this and some of the negative, negative and positive space with the letters. So I wanted to like work with that and push it a little bit and then also do a little more hand illustration. So I took it into um, Procreate on um, the iPad Pro and I did a little bit of uh, illustrating. I, I used a different font than 
than that one, but it has a similar feel to it. Maybe we'll show it um, in post, but um, so I finalized that logo and now I'm, I've been trying to figure out like, well, all right, what, what am I going to do for some cover art? And I've been sketching that. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much, um, what's been going on for me. Uh, you know, and that kind of leads into like my, my goals for next time. So, um, you know, it's just basically getting feedback from you guys and, exploring cover art and maybe even some color studies as I'm moving in from writing the script and doing more going into production on the book. So all, all exciting stuff. I'm super motivated. Yeah. It's a really major milestone that you, uh, that you had to, to kind of get in that, uh, that kind of like script outline kind of laid out like this. Cause it was really, really impactful. I really got an, an understanding of the world and kind of how it functions, kind of how, uh, you know, your arcs work. I wasn't really sure about that before. Not that I didn't have confidence in it, but I just didn't see the, the whole picture. Um, and it's just, it just comes together really beautifully. I also like that you have sent it to a lot of people you know, people who are interested in storytelling, but you also let your wife get a chance to read it. And um, yeah. you got to get her, got her feedback from that, you know. And she also said it was like a page turner, you know, like she couldn't yeah. walk to the next, the next moment, which is, I think that's important. I think just kind of, you know, getting a wide range of people's, you know, feedback on, on that. Like if they, if they're not into this kind of thing, does, is it still compelling? And I think that was a really good idea for you to have her check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got something different to bring to the table. I really value that about, you know, like each and every one of you guys. And, um, you know, you guys are coming from the art world that are into this type of medium. And, and so it's good to get a perspective, like from my wife who, um, maybe comes at writing from a more academic standpoint and, has her background in literacy and not so much in like comic and fantasy and, and this kind of like manga world or whatever. Um, but also like, I, I don't really have too many connections to profession professional, the professional comic world. Like I know a lot of artists will have like, like a pro writer that they will consult to get ed editing feedback. Um, I mean, I do know, I do have some friends that are professional writers which I'm going to reach out to. Um, but yeah, I'm still kind of feeling that process out. So it's like, I don't know, you guys are the ones that I know and trust and have been along for the journey that understand like the things that I'm trying to accomplish. So, yeah. um, I will say uh, real quick, something you said about drawing, roughing out the pages and figuring out the dialogue. Uh, one thing with that, the children's book, uh, it's really great to know exactly what you're saying with the dialogue and where you want it before you really put that fine, like final line down, you know, just for placement and gutter and stuff like that, you know? Oh yeah. So just something to keep in mind. I get what you're saying though, where you're like, I just want to get some rough stuff out there. Then you can figure out the placement. But once you, I think before you go from rough to, tying it down or final really mm. put that, uh, the dialogue down what you want to say. Yeah. That might be a good point. It's a trip because I'm um, doing like, you know, sequential media. A part of that is like a layout that includes text. Right. So like, um, you know, if it was just only pictures, that's one thing, but you have to have space for where the words are, you know, and, mm. and, how much space did that take? What are you covering up? You know, like how, how did, and you know, the, the text becomes a part of the composition of the, of the page. So, um, you know, it does your, does your image require a lot of exposition that's textual mm -hmm. or, you know, or not, you know, and I, I in a weird way, I kind of like that there's minimal, stuff in your script I, mm -hmm. I think it's almost better that if the dialogue is really minimal in your story you know um and let the let the image work kind of yeah. 
so I, you know, you know the 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 fable thing, like show not tell, right? Like uh, show me, don't don't mm. tell me what happened. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally thinking about that too. How how am I gonna if I can visually tell a story well, then then that's like a success. So yeah, I mean, I think I want to keep the dialogue to a minimum, but I mean, some some stuff in it. Um, there's parts in the script that are like, ooh, this there's a lot of exposition here, and it's like, how can I cut this down? That's kind of, I guess, where I'm at with the script now. It's like, uh, what can I, what can I refine down even more? Like, am I blabbing too much with the backstory? Maybe I need to cut some of the backstory out and just uh, have the audience sort of imagine what it is or fill in the blanks. I don't know. Um, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's some scenes right. you have. <laughs> that there's no dialogue, it's just straight action. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh, these I, these moments I'm visualizing. And the things that happen in these action scenes, they tell you something about the character. They tell you something about the world, like the nature of one of these characters' actions says, okay, this guy is, he's rough and he doesn't care about whatever. Or, oh, this person is, coming face to face with an issue that they're having because you're dealing with that visual representation of it. And to me, that's kind of the beauty of this medium that we're working in. I, I'm ex I don't know, I'm excited about it just after reading it. I'm like, ah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to release some of the artwork too. I think also going in production, uh, the script is sort of broken up into five different parts. So each part is like about a 24, 25 page issue. So it'd, it'd be great as I'm doing it, I'll just work sequentially and uh, and and start to like put some stuff out online for people can see the characters and see the story develop. Uh, it feels a little bit like I'm building the ship while I'm flying it or whatever, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's fun. You know, it's it's definitely like a dream to to do a project like this. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Welcome to the club. I'm sure there's a ton of artists <laughs> out there that'll be like, we do that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel your pain, Tim, with uh, working on. You know, you mentioned your characters. Trying to find out what your characters' motivations are as they're going through the world, and uh, I mean, that's really, you know, storytelling's like. Uh, What's the old saying? It's like, it's about a guy who did something, you know? Like, mm -hmm. who's your main character? What's he trying to do? Find out, like, what's a natural motivation for that? And yeah, uh, yeah, I got into tons of uh, story structure book, mostly like screenplay writing, like I said, because I was thinking in terms of a movie, but Robert McKee's story, um, it was big time influential. Um, John Truby's 22. Uh, steps. Um, yeah, I love that book. Yeah, who else? Uh, we'll save the cat. I think we talked about that before, yeah. which was another one. Mm -hmm. You know, for somebody that you know, I went to school for visual art. I didn't really go for creative writing, and so stepping into the world of writing has been a, a challenge to me because I don't have like that background. And actually, I had never really considered myself to be a writer. Uh, I just knew that there was this world that lived inside my brain that I had to get out there and. Uh, I tried working with other writers and they're phenomenal artists and great writers, but uh, they can't see the world that's in my head. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to figure out how to become a writer then. And uh, so, yeah, for somebody that like Save the Cat, um, Blake Snyder, he, I know it's kind of frowned upon by a lot of guys in Hollywood, a lot of screenplay artists that are like, oh, it's too form formulaic and you know, trying to put specific beats on specific pages in the script. Um, is like killing storytelling in Hollywood or whatever. But for me, who doesn't really know much about building structure, it was huge to take a look at that. Um, that oh yeah, there there are some common beats, and oh uh, also uh, the um, uh, hero with a thousand faces, uh, Joseph Campbell, yeah. hero's journey kind of stuff was something that's fascinated me ever since you know we were at CCS um, learning about that. And Star Wars, obviously, was like huge inspiration to me growing up. So it's like, okay, I can see how stories have like similar threads. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, yeah, you can kind of get pigeonholed, but but anyway, there's a lot of resources out there that can help 
structure and maybe we'll put some links in the description to some of these things that I found really helpful. Yeah, that would be great. Um, but yeah, all these other storytellers, you know, find some tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I love the uh, the idea of the, like the shaman from from old days of old that would get the village around a campfire and would tell a story about things that they needed to hear. You know, they needed to hear about the origins of the world or you know ways to like live their life to be successful or good or whatever. And um, so storytelling for me is like the same thing. It's like, well, what do I want to tell an audience? Like, what things do I value and how can I weave that into uh, an entertaining medium uh, that can really move people beyond just like pretty pictures? Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the art of storytelling is just something that I've really fallen in love with and uh, it can make or break your thing, you know? So it's really important that you spend time and develop that, so. Right. Without a doubt. It's a lot, but it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so I don't know. Do you guys have anything else that you wanted to share tonight? Um, let me see. Yeah. Um, Motor City Comic Con is coming up pretty soon. Uh, oh. And uh, I was not thinking about uh, going this year, but do you know who's going to be there this year, guys? <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Jim Lee? Jim Lee. Jim Lee. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm thinking about, uh, so my sister loves Jim Lee. Uh, Jim Lee is probably my main art influence from the 90s. For um, sure. And uh, so they have it set up where you can, you know, RSVP, like 150 bucks. You can take, you can get a picture with him. <laughs> and get three comics signed and blah blah blah. Right? And I'm thinking about doing that. But the thing that I've always loved about Comic Comic Con is not been the celebrities, but it's really going to Artist Alley and to just uh once again networking with people. And I and I and I kind of feel like um the work that we're doing with our books, with our websites, you know, with this with this channel. I think I think it'd be wise for us to um, at least go one of the days, you know, like mm -hmm. what you know, like forty five bucks or mm -hmm. like that's thirty five for the first day, forty for the second, or maybe forty five for the second or forty for the third. That's what it's usually. Um, I'm really considering, you know, like I, I'm starting to feel like I can't miss it. So, um, I, you know, I just want to go and touch base with the other artists and. Still rub elbows with the the community. Mm -hmm. You know, right. you're not feeling getting a booth yet this year. No, no, I need to. I, I need to have a finished product for 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 That's this. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah, like I want to have. I, I've already done my art book, so I, you know, I want to. Next year, I want to actually have a finished book. I want to have a published finish. But I want to, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal. I was gonna say that's one way you can maybe. Uh bypass the lines and the and the fees to meet Jim Lee is just like get a booth and then hang out in the green room all day. <laughs> right, right. Right. Have your boy sit at your table and like, what are you doing in here? Eating food all the time? No, I'm waiting for Jim Lee to come out. That guy hasn't left the green room all day long. Just keep eating the nachos. <laughs> We're running out of nachos. <laughs> He's like <laughs> He's like the major celebrity draw, right? Like those guys <laughs> never come to the artist booth. Like they right. They have their own trailer. They probably got there. They got people bringing them food. They like escort them in and out. <laughs> right. so I'm sure. I'm sure we. I'm not gonna run into him. That would know? be. That would be cool though to have that. Like if we all had our comic ready and just who knows, you know, who knows what would happen. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It'd be great to have something for yeah. that day right like i don't know what it would be but if i had a mini comic ready just to go like and i just had it print out and just and it's got my website and all my instagram information on the back and mm -hmm. i was giving out my like a issue zero or something mm -hmm. like a limited edition that'd be how oh, that'd be dope you're giving me something to think about sam i might i might aim for something <laughs> like 
Yeah. Why not? Just have it ready. Mm. You never know. Mm. Yeah, Tim, you gave me a good suggestion. Like uh, when I do this gallery show, if and when, I don't know exactly if it's going to happen, but uh, to put together um, an Inktober book of all the, the drawings yeah. I did last October. That, that's a great idea. I, mm -hmm. I thought about that for a while um, just to put a collection. Maybe I'll shoot uh, shoot one over to Parker and see. just say, hey, thanks for setting it up. Setting it up. I know he likes to get other artists. Uh, Inktober collection. So, yeah, I think it'd be wise if you had the gallery have a couple, couple of the, um, like a couple books, and then also some of the your favorite uh, Inktober as like bigger illustration or bigger prints. You know. Yeah. If yeah, you're selling, take a... selling originals, I definitely still want uh, number nine. Oh man, for sure. Uh, don't don't sell it. Yeah, <laughs> thirteen. I'm down buying that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and quite as kept if you sold an inktober book then i'd buy that i'd buy that too yeah. yeah yeah so i might do that uh i think it'd be, be something that you sell on your gum road or you know whatever that'd be like maybe even a patreon gift or something i'm telling you like this stuff because mm -hmm. all of those are uh related to yeshua oh, a lot of them are right yeah yeah, so, that, I've, been, I've been really trying to focus on that and not branch off into too many projects and really focus on the Yeshua. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, gosh. I mean, it's like a full-time job doing all this stuff, keeping track of social media. And, like, I mean, that's that's the struggle with having a passion project that you're trying to get out to the world and still got to go to the to your job Monday morning, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, on the on the flip side, it's also the blessing. This is this is really what we want to do, you know. And and there's gonna be a point where we'll get to a place where there'll be people that are hungry for it, and they'll be like, "Hey, when's your next video? When's your next post?" You know, like that. Mm -hmm. They'll be ravenously clamoring for your, our, you know, your next thing, you know. So it's something that, uh, I mean, this is the dream. Yeah. This is what we want. Yeah. You know? So, and Tim, uh, also, when this book comes out, I, we want to be able to. I want. I want a copy, you know. Um, and I want to, you know. Please let us know, like, how to connect with uh, wherever the dis distribution outlet is for for the book, because I'm definitely interested in it. We'll do. Yeah, that. yeah. I'm curious, you know, if she's going to go digital or. Um, physical copies you know mm -hmm. it's easier but it's always nice to have something in your hand something you can mail to a publishing house or yeah you know something my bet is mm -hmm. my bet is physical because i bet it'll be in libraries it'll be for like the kids and stuff i would, I would my gut feeling is that i think so. I, want one for, I want one for my kids <laughs> i was gonna say i got three little boys that need to hear some good <laughs> stories like that and, Every night I read to them, you know, and it's kind of funny, like getting exposure to the the world of children's books, because I'm like some of the stuff I really enjoy reading to my kids, and then like other stuff they love. And I'm like, oh, you want to read that one again? All right, so dumb. <laughs> but it's a uh, it's a tricky it's a tricky world that um, mm -hmm. I, I do want to do a, a children's book sometime, because I think it'd be fun. But I feel like uh, I kind of I think I heard it's kind of a competitive. Uh, region uh you know it's it a niche yeah. i don't know i have a, a buddy i work with that that's working on a second children's book and yeah definitely like he was telling me um the per the publishing house that hired him he actually met them like three years prior and it, it's not always like how good you are it's also can are they looking for your art style for that book does it fit yeah, so it's like you gotta be patient, and you just gotta keep uh, keep at it. You know? Yeah, seems that it's that way with uh, from like what Mike Wynn was talking about when he was talking with people at Nickelodeon or whoever, like talking about uh, show like animated shows for kids. That it's the same sort of thing. It's like, well, we have a lineup of shows, and we have like a demographic and a market that we're trying to hit. And like, does your product fill our like per, our show space? It's mm -hmm. like, man. I think that's changing too though there's so many streaming services now true and it's just more opportunities for every all of us you know to really get something out there because uh 
on those streaming platforms, there really is no uh, time slots. You know, it's, mm-hmm. do you have something that relates to a certain audience they're trying to reach? Right. Yeah. So maybe with the way mediums changing now, yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's looking good. I heard Disney just started. Uh, they're just starting up a streaming. Yeah, they're uh, getting ready to do their streaming uh, channel to compete with like Netflix and a few other ones, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 So, Speaking of, you know, you've got good timing for your uh, your book with this little lion cub and a giraffe. Like, <laughs> Lion King's going to come out. Oh, uh, you're really like, right. Like, I mean, like you people are in love with that, that uh, to the visual aesthetic of that. It's yeah. pretty good timing. That's true. That's Overlay true. that uh, quote from Simba. Like, Dad, don't we eat the giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Because we are the king. Yeah, I should have. Uh, I should have put like a dark veil somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a hyena, and uh, one. Hey, no, I don't. I don't want to show it. I do have a hyena in one of the pages. No got spoilers. Hey, got yeah. the book, huh? Kids, <laughs> should be in bed by now. Kids, it's ten. Right, right. <laughs> kids watch Game of Thrones right now. <laughs> <laughs> Should not be watching that. You kids, no Game of Thrones for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys got your taxes done? Yeah, man. Did those tax days yeah. tomorrow? Two months ago, baby. Two, three months ago. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I figured we mentioned the blood moon that one night. This is yeah. kind of as epic as a blood moon. It's a tax right. day tomorrow. Right. You better get it done. Did you guys find or are you running? Have you guys ever heard the song Don't Mess with the IRS? Uh-oh. Oh gosh, no. Just, just look it up. It's, it's funny and then it's kind of it's kind of deep. But you just check it out. It's, it's funny. You guys uh, you know what I did with my tax return this year. I never really buy big things. Like the last big thing I bought was my computer. But this I went off on a limb and I uh, I purchased a iPad Pro. What you did? Yeah. And I was like, I thought I was gonna have buyer's remorse. Now I'm still going. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you get the latest one with the pen that just on the side? <laughs> yeah, I didn't want the one that you stick it in and you're like, well, am I am I holding that sign up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. That thing's yeah. definitely gonna get snapped off. <laughs> if you're at my house. Both are probably good. I went with the newer one because of the way that the pen charges, but really just I had an opportunity to get the newer technology because they had a sale. It was like $150 off. So I was like, okay, this, that's a pretty good amount off of an uh, Where's off, this sale? Off. It was at Best Buy. Be by. That's right. You missed it. Uh, wow, man. So, okay, you know, I've been bouncing back and forth. Do I want to get a Cintiq or do I want to do the, the iPad Pro? Because I've used, uh, you know, like I mentioned, um, Procreate in the in the iPad. I love the performance of it. It's like really slick. I just wonder too, like uh, how it works for like transferring files back and forth. I don't know if you've had to do that. Oh, you know, yeah. if you wanna... That's why I want to. You probably yeah. you probably have to use the um, the cloud. Yeah, they really push the iCloud. Like I thought, mm-hmm. uh, I I'm used to like a, a Mac at work. I will always switch to PCs, but I thought there's going to be a folder I can just save stuff to. Mm-hmm. But really, I'm not sure where the files save to besides in the Procreate, you know, um, area. Like I don't know where that f- folder is on the iPad yet. I need to actually mm-hmm. look for that. I'm assuming if I plug it in, it'll show up. But um, yeah, I download Dropbox onto my iPad and I figure I could switch between desktop and and the iPad between it. Mm-hmm. I haven't got that far yet, but yeah. How did you do it with yeah. your the logo you did and the comic? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been working off of uh, my Google Drive with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I was having like uh, internet issues one night, and I was like, crap, I can't like say, I can't transfer this to my PC uh, because I can't get this uploaded to my drive and then download it. I was like, this is this can't happen when you got a deadline coming, you know? So I don't know. I still got to figure out a little bit of file transferring, but I know, I know if you have like the complete Apple suite, like if I was going from the, from the tablet to like a, an Apple computer, like on my desktop, you can easily just like airdrop it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. 
but it's like, do I want to have like the, do I want to be locked in to Apple for the rest of my life? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Right. I mean, I, I like Apple products, but, uh, but yeah, because I do want to use other programs on my desktop. Like I want to use Maya with stuff and you can't just, as far as I know, you can't be rocking Maya on a, on a tablet. Right. And I know there was talk about getting uh, Photoshop, uh, like a tablet version of Photoshop, but it looks like, it's going to be the complete creative suite. I mean, mm -hmm. so that's a little bit problematic, but I guess you could maybe, can you, can you hook up a hard drive and just work off a hard drive to it? No, it's all, they don't have any sort of. Seems kind of ancient technology. Port, which is kind of crazy because I still want a USB port. I don't yeah, they don't have any USB ports on there? Mm, I don't think so. I can double check. I think it's just the charging port. Right. But I think because, yeah, like you said, Google Drive. You can Google Drive it now. Or I'm a little bit. Share or whatever. I'm kind of old school with the technology, you know, Same. even though we work at like a tech tech company you know like i don't know yeah. i'm just kind of old school and i focus more on the art than i just want like my workflow to work but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. so i don't know the jury's still out as right. i'm thinking about that too because definitely digital drawing for this for this comic is the way i want to go mm -hmm. it's sure. just so powerful so much faster uh yeah yeah I think that's the key. Yeah, that's that's why I want. I'm doing it digital because I want to be able to reuse stuff. Like, I don't really look at that as cheating. I'm looking at that as as a speeding, you know, a speed just to help me out, so I can yeah. copy a pose and paste the next page and change it a little bit. Yeah, it's needed. You know, I've been thinking about getting an iPad too. Um, well, one of my girls were in town. They asked me uh if i could do like some stop motion video with them right and i was not really sure how to do that and they just were like siri how do we do stop motion youtube videos and they just sent me directly to stop motion pro right mm -hmm. and my goodness man i had a blast doing it it's super easy and i was like dude i could use this like as a kind of like as a pencil test you know to do like basic animation stuff and I did my little um, Optimus Prime. I did like a very basic like Optimus Prime like animation, and then um I got like these these little these guys here and stuff. Yeah. And I just did like a super basic like you know twenty five frame animation just with that. I'm like, oh man, this could be this could be fun. So you can also use like if I had like the iPad, I can use my phone and stuff as like a shutter. So like I can I can like shoot from a distance if I like lay if I set it up where it's shooting like as a down shooter and I could just click and then change the frame and click. It's really mm -hmm. cool. So um anyway, this is, you know, I you can also use stop motion pro on like, you know, whatever other other things too, but it just was it was just super easy on my phone. So mm -hmm. and it's just something I was thinking about. But anyway. So yeah. Siri, Siri doesn't know about the lunchbox. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Gary Schwartz for showing us the lunchbox. Yeah. Oh, oh, did you guys? Um, Larry Larson, he passed away. Not so yeah, long. he oh, did. He yeah, did. I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. much love to Larry Larson, a wonderful teacher, just a big heart and a and a, right. and, a and a ton of and a ton of experience, a ton of. Um, insight on how to you know how to approach artwork is one mm -hmm. of the best teachers I've ever had right yeah i it's can so yeah i mean it, he was yeah a wealth of knowledge but just a very loving like mm -hmm. caring guy like he sat down and talked to all of his students like you know when he talks to you it, it was like uh you're the only person that mattered in the world in that moment because yeah. he like really did care about what's going on in your world, and yeah, uh, and he's yeah, he did uh, some some audio for one of the animations I did when I was in school too. So I'm gonna cherish that, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's great. He was a stop motion teacher, but really a uh, stop motion animator, and uh, he also worked on some movies like uh, I believe Evil Dead, right? Oh uh, yeah. Can you do something, and. Um, 
at some point you started teaching over at the College for Creative Studies in Detroit. And uh, he was just was great. And really, he, he did stop motion. He did puppet um, building and right. also mm -hmm. taught us CG and character animation. And That's right. He, yeah. he wasn't even a CG person, but he just knew how to capture mm -hmm. you know, acting a performance. Yeah, his um, yeah his uh, his puppet making class was legendary. I mean, yeah. he was like fabricating ball and socket joint um, stop motion, you know, puppets. And did he do maquettes like a maquette class yeah. as well? Yeah, he sure did. He's one of Man. the that would do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought yeah. about just coming back at, after graduation just to take some of his classes on the slide, just because I'm like, yo, Larry, just let me come in. <laughs> I never did that. I wish I would have though. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Just, and you're right, man. Just um, uh, just a big heart about like what's going on in your world, and but also just kind of like he he cared deeply about the story of your animation and your like even just a small movement. He treated it like it was a story. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was like, you need to think about like like the 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 thought process and the story and the energy and the heart behind every of these movements. You know, and and he just made. It's kind of like you ever you ever have Larry play like music for you guys. Like he had a guitar and he'd bring it in class and stuff, and he'd play songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. like the way he treated animation was like a song. You know what I'm saying? He 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 he. You'd add you'd animate. You treat it like okay. You've got to treat it like you you're you've got an audience, and that what you're doing is beautiful. You wanna you wanna play your animation like it's like it's music. And I just um. I just really appreciated his perspective. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but his presence as a teacher and, a, and as a friend in my life, what a great guy. Yeah. Yep. He will be missed for sure. You know, he'll be, he's immortalized in some, uh, some people's artwork. So Larry lives on, you know? Yeah. Totally inspiration. You know, I hope I can leave uh, an artistic legacy behind like he did. Yeah, uh, just truly loved his work. You could see it. Um, yeah, absolutely. So once again, love to Larry Larson, and uh, we all love you. We've been touched by your by your presence, and 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 we'll we'll keep on trying to live the legacy of what you've you've given us. Thank you, Larry. Thank yeah. you. So. Well, cool. Well, should we end it on that note tonight? Yeah, I think. Uh, it's good. I think it's a great place to end it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So join us back here uh, next month. We'll talk about how things went for the month of April. And uh, hopefully we'll have some new exciting things to talk about and share with you. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, viewing audience, thanks for jamming with us. <laughs> we, will yeah. we will definitely see you next time. And uh, much love, guys. Yeah, thank you for tuning in. See you guys. Have a good Later. one. Later.